Hello manager, let's talk about critical path method. Critical path is the longest path on your schedule and it automatically implies that everything that is on this critical path cannot be delayed because it will impact the deadline of the whole project. That's why in this video let's discuss what is a critical path method and what you need to know about it and all the risks that relate to the tasks on the critical path. Okay, first of all, the critical path method is a project scheduling method. It means that you need to create a schedule in a certain way to use this method. But before we dive deep, I want you to understand that you need a project management software to run this analysis and find out the critical path. If you do it manually, it will take too much time and it's not worth the effort. All right, here's how you come up with a project schedule. And it all starts with identifying activities or tasks on your project. And ideally, you do it through the work breakdown structure. You take the deliverables, work packages and break them down into the tasks. If you don't know what a work breakdown structure, I'll leave you a link to my video on WBS. Do watch it because it's the essential part of creating any schedule. Next step is to identify resources, people and materials that are required to finish these tasks, each one of them. Next, you'll need to identify dependencies between tasks. And I want you to understand that critical path method is fully based on the dependencies that you assign. For one side, you will have hard dependencies which are dictated by the process, the technological needs or the hard requirements by clients. For example, you can't paint a wall before you build the wall. So it's a hard dependency. So you need to work with your team and subject matter experts to identify these hard dependencies where tasks should follow in a sequence and you can't change the order. But after that, you also need to add discretionary dependencies to each task. Otherwise, you will have hundreds of tasks that potentially can be run in the parallel right at the start of the project. But in the real world, it doesn't happen this way. So you need to add these dependencies as you see fit. It will add logic and the flow to your project. And here's the thing. In the ideal world, you want to run a project as a one long sequence of activities or tasks. You don't want to do work in parallel because it adds risks and communication overhead. You need to control all these activities. But in the real world, the product owners want to get their product service or result as soon as possible. That's why they will insist on doing the work in parallel as fast as it's practically can be done. That's why you'll have to break down your lengthy sequence of activities at some point where you have discretionary dependency and you can do this work in parallel. And here's a pro tip from real life. If you want to keep your project manageable, you want to do in parallel the whole deliverables, not random activities from random deliverables. So you do maybe two or three deliverables at a time and once one of them is finished, you will start another one and maybe you will have another deliverable in parallel to that. But you got the point. Each parallel thread of activities or tasks on your project project adds up communication overhead. You need to control and align the resources between these threads. The next step is to estimate the duration of each task or activity. And here the critical path method uses the single point estimate. From one side, it simplifies the process for you. From the other, there are some challenges that we'll discuss in just a minute. As I said, you need a project management software to do this critical path analysis. Because most probably you already heard about the network diagram and that you need to calculate the duration of this diagram manually. But in the real world, no one does it manually because it's a waste of time. A project management software will calculate the critical path for you in real time while you move around the tasks. And believe me, while you come up with the final draft or the schedule, you will make a lot of changes and recalculating the critical path for each of these versions is a huge waste of time. That's one of those cases where the network diagram knowledge and how to calculate the duration on the paper is only needed for the PMP exam. You don't do it in the real world. That's why I have to mention one important resource for you. The sponsor of this video is my free resource guide called 
5 critical areas a great project manager needs to master. This PDF provides you access to unique content and tools that I don't share anywhere else. Things like my full guide to leadership, scope and risk management plan templates and lots of other valuable resources. If you want to be a successful project manager, this guide is for you. The link is in the description below this video. Alright, your project management software shows you the longest path through your schedule. So what does it mean for you? As I said, any activity or task on this critical path cannot be delayed, because if you delay one of these activities, it will directly impact the date of the project finish. That's why you should focus your attention on activities on critical path. And if you have different threads going on in parallel to that, you can and should assign the responsibility for that thread to one of your team members, for team leads and so on. For the same reason, you should focus on risks related to activities on your critical path and you should dedicate as much time as possible on identifying new risks, on tracking the efficiency of your risk responses and so on. And as you remember, we have a single point estimate for our tasks. It means that you can do the estimation in two different ways. The wrong way is to put buffers on each task to uh, allocate these buffers for some possible risks. But the proper way to do it is to actually dedicate risk reserves to each task and track them separately as a separate entity in your schedule. Likewise, you may want to add some slack into your schedule and don't put all the tasks one after another for the whole duration of the project. It doesn't happen this way in the real world. The biggest challenge of the critical path method is that you have to include everything transparently into your schedule. Risk reserves, waiting times or anything that increases the duration of the project. Otherwise, it will not work. Another challenge with the critical path method is that it actually tells you how to optimize your project schedule and project in general to make the most efficient use of all the resources and time. So if you make your schedule in a such way that you have equal in duration parallel threads of work, it will mean that you will have three critical paths. From one side, it's a super optimized schedule. From the other, you introduced lots of risks and lots of uh, communication and management overhead to your project. And the biggest problem here is to level resources on these parallel threads. So if you have one person that has tasks in each of these threads of work, you need to ensure that on a one given day, he's working only on one activity. Without a robust project management software, it becomes a real pain to level resources. So in general, I would recommend that you don't over-optimize your project schedule this way. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. And here's what will happen. YouTube will notice that you want to learn more about project management and leadership. Therefore, it will recommend you more videos from my channel and from other channels on project management. So give it a like and we'll stay connected. All right, thanks for watching. If you want to become a great project manager, don't forget to get my PDF on the five areas that you must focus on. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.